I am so excited to chat with you today and to dive into this amazing discussion. I'm on my way right now to the gym and so I'm driving and I wanted to share something that came up in our our discussion today. Every morning, Nathan and I gather the boys and we do Bible and breakfast. (laughs) And, you know, as we've been uncovering new truths, some of the most amazing conversations have been coming out of this time in the Word together as a family. And one of the things that Nathan and I have really been focusing on As parents, especially now as, you know, we have a 15-year-old, a 13-year-old, Benjamin's going to turn 12 this year. So next year we'll have three teenagers. Asher's about to turn seven. And we've been really focusing on facilitating conversations that will teach the boys how to think instead of what to think. And um, so one of the topics that have come up today, we've been going over the book of Nehemiah over the last week. And I wanted to I wanted to dive into Nehemiah because if you look at the beginning of the that whole book in that passage in the first couple chapters, Nehemiah says or the book says, you know, that God put this in his heart. And then he says it later on. I think it's the seventh or eighth chapter where he says, the Lord put it in my heart to do X, Y, Z. I wanted to go through the book of Nehemiah, first of all, because he's the cupbearer. You know, it's a very important job. He was there to protect the king. He, he laid his life down as the cupbearer um, because he was the first one to test the wine to make sure that there was no poison or there was nothing that was getting to the king that had to go through him first. And... Um, he was greatly distraught and the king said you know there's no reason to be sad why are you sad and he said well this this thing is happening and i need to go build the wall and so he he gets the king's backing and the, the king writes letters for him so that he can pass over you know through these different cities and then as you as you go through these chapters uh nehemiah shares the story of them rebuilding the wall and rebuilding the city and there was opposition there was threats there were times that he was accused of doing things that he didn't do and what was so incredible in in the early chapter he says god himself will prosper me and first of all um and this is not even necessarily the topic i want to cover today but go back into that whole passage it's like God put something in his heart to accomplish. And because God established the work, Nehemiah was able to boldly face all the opposition, all the people who were attacking him, the betrayal, um, the false accusations. And he was able to, to confidently say, God himself will prosper me. And you guys should recognize, <laughs> you guys need to watch out and watch yourself. Um, And he prayed some pretty bold prayers in those times, too, where it was like God remembered what these people did as they went out to thwart what you've established. Like, don't forget these guys and and the evil that they're doing. Um, I'm like, boys, we don't pray those kinds of prayers yet. (laughs) Like, that's that's another discussion. Um, So one of the things that came up today is we're talking about the Levites. And if you remember one of the 12 tribes was Levi and they were the priests. And so this conversation came up today where we started talking about first fruits and Nathan is such a gifted teacher. I love, I could sit and listen to him teach the word all day. There's an impartation that happens when Nathan begins to teach. And my prayer for you today is that I'm, as I'm sharing the truth of the word, Um, I I pray that there would be an impartation to you, a revelation of, and a refreshing and a newness of the truth of this, this one principle, you know, in, in the scriptures, the Bible talks about when we give God our first fruits, the first fruit of our grain, um, it says that our vats will be overflowing and our barns will be full. And so Nathan began to teach about how important it is to give God not our scraps, but our first fruits. And that's financially, that's our time and our energy. He said, even what we do every morning is we gather together as a family and we eat breakfast and we get into the word, the very first onset of our day, we're giving God the first fruit of our day. And I wanna encourage you as you're pursuing, remember, 
God has a plan for your life, and I have so much exciting news to share with you all. I've had so much breakthrough in the last few weeks, you know, the last two years since moving to Tennessee, since transitioning our business to this, um, to the network marketing, social selling model, it has been challenge after challenge after channel challenge. Sometimes I felt like I've been hitting a brick wall. It has been a heartbreaking process, but in it all, I have continued to inquire of the Lord and remaining steadfast in obedience. Even though there have been times when I'm like, where did we miss it, Lord? I don't think it should be this difficult. I don't think it should be this hard. But one thing is for certain. There is a promise in the scripture that when we give God our best, when we give him the first fruits of whatever we have, and this is one of the things I said, boys, you know, when you make your money, we know that we tithe. We give God the very first fruits. And we talked about, the, you know, the story of Cain and Abel and all of this as well as Cain was rejected by God because he, you know, and here's what I want to encourage you right now. There was, there's an, there's an aroma that the Lord, that reaches its, to the heavens when we give God our best, when we, when we sacrifice, um, when we give him an offering and a sacrifice of praise, of time, of resources, give him your first fruits and the promise is that your vats will be full and overflowing, that your barns will be full. There will be a newness and a refreshing. And this is the same thing spiritually. We were talking about how, you know, the, in Israel, they would let every seventh year, they would let the land rest and it would create abundance. And we talked to the boys today. I was like, you know, this makes me think about if you understand God's ways, he has created principles in every part of life. If you look at the earth, it's like everything is regenerating and renewing itself. We have moisture that reaches up to the clouds and then the clouds get full and then it rains and you know the the plants release their seeds and it comes into the ground and then the ground renews itself and there is newness of plant life and a regeneration and a renewal that happens and um and one of god's ways is this idea of rejuvenation and renewal and we aren't meant to be tired spiritually we aren't meant to be fatigued in our journey when we're being obedient and we're doing the work that god has established for us and this is something that i i'm preaching to the choir here because i'm realizing there's been times when i've when i've been striving over the last couple years and to go back to the the simple principle of giving the lord your adoration your praise your first fruits your breast the best part of your day, first thing in the morning, like give that time to the Lord and offer praise to him and get into the word and do it with your family. And um, there will be a newness and a renewing and a refreshing that happens. And it's not just our financial vats and our financial barns that are full. It's our spirits that are renewed and refreshed. It's our soul, our um, every part of our body, you know, I've been building the certification course for um, functional beauty specialists. And I'm teaching on how the skin operates and how important the skin is. You know, it's the shield. God has put a covering in the earth. Think about pine needles and pine cones and how God established a covering over the earth. And he's given our, our bodies a covering. It's our skin, right? And every 30 days, we have a brand new skin. It's really amazing how God created us as well. Like he created us to be renewed and he's given us principles of renewal. And so one of the principles of renewal and never running out and always overflowing, you know, is to give him the first fruits. And so I want to encourage you, if there's any area that you're holding on to tightly that you haven't released to the Lord, if you're giving him your scraps, if you're giving him your leftovers, um, if you're tithing after you've had increase and after you've paid your bills and after you've gone and done all of your grocery shopping, I would encourage you to look at that and say, you know what? I need to give God my first fruits. It's the first fruits of your increase. Every morning we have breath in our lungs and we wake up. We need to give him 
the first part and the best part of our day. And when we do that, we will be renewed. We will be overflowing. We will have more than enough. God never intended us for us just to have just enough. He never intended for us to be in survival mode. Look at the story of Paul when he was in prison and the chains were broken and they were giving God and offering him their praise. And look, there was freedom and joy so much to the point where it's overflowing and touching the, the soldier who got saved and his whole family got saved. Our life as believers, ladies, friend, if you can hear me on one thing, our life is intended to be overflowing so much to the point that it touches and reaches those around us. The people around us should be filled with joy because of the joy that's overflowing from us. And when we are in mourning or if we are in sadness, it's important that we get back to the basic principles of sowing the first fruits and giving the Lord the sacrifice of praise and offering up to him the first fruits. And that's financially, that's in our spiritual walk, that's in our time, in our practical, and sharing in communion with the Father and come back to that simple, beautiful relationship. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And let's, let us as as women who are leading and building, those of us who are the her effect, that's you. You are the her effect. You are the her effect in your home. Think about the seven pillars and every area you are having an impact. And if you go back to giving God your best, giving him the first, he says he will, I mean, there's every, look at all the principles, the if then principles in scripture where he says, if you do this, then I will. He is always a rewarder. And one of the rewards of giving God the first part of your day is energy throughout the day, a renewed, a freshness of spirit and excitement, an anticipation for what is to come. Connections happen. He, he causes things to work in our favor. He causes everything to work in for our good. One of the things that we've been discussing is, you know, did we mistake, make a mistake buying this farm? And, you know, because now we're here landing in Thompson Station. Maybe it was a two-step. Maybe it, it was the thing that got us here. Um, but one thing is for sure, we have continued to press into God. Our family has continued to to be united and to it has caused us to think differently about how we want to do life together as a family and what we're building. And even though we don't always see the fruit right now yet of this move, we know that it has been an opportunity for us to draw near to God and draw near as a family. And so if there are unanswered questions in your life right now, Um, Stay true to the simple principles of drawing near to the Lord, abiding in Him, giving Him your first fruits, and you will be renewed, and and you will live in a sense of abundance. So much more to share on this topic, but I just want to encourage you. Give Him your first fruits. Give Him your first fruits. Give Him your first fruits. Don't give Him the leftovers. He is worthy, and He is also a God whose word never fails. And so when you do that, there will be a newness, a refreshing and overflowing in every, every part of your life. And remember the impact that you're called to have in your home, in your, in your sphere. Think about the Proverbs 31 woman who was planting vineyards, taking care of her household. She had an impact in her community, in her family. Her husband was respected at the city gates. I really believe strongly that was because he had the right helper by his side. You know, Nathan and I have been talking about you and the things that he's stepping into. And I'm like, I know my role is to be his helper. And part of my role is to be the financial economic driver. And so for all of you ladies that have that, that feel that, that know that. And if you don't, if it's not the economic driver, then that's okay too. Like you have something specific that you're doing that's helping your husband so that he can ultimately be respected at the city gates and be in his throne doing the things that he's called to do. And as as women, we can rally the troops. You know, I'm the rallier in the home. I'm like, okay guys, breakfast. Nathan actually made breakfast this morning. I got the kids. Um, I said, everybody get your Bible. It's so cute too. Noble, who's two years old, 
says, my Bible. <laughs> and he says, Bobble. And he gets so excited and he goes, finds his Bible and he sits down and he puts his Bible in his lap and he lasts about five minutes. And then he starts running around, but we get him to sit down and we're actually teaching him right now. I'm like, he can sit down for 15 minutes quietly and he can listen, even though he doesn't understand what's going on. It's part of the the training and the discipline process. So anyways, I'm going on a tangent here, but I love you. You've got what it takes. Give God your first fruits and have expectation that your vats will be overflowing in every part of your life. And remember, you are meant to have an effect. You are the her effect. Love you. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to today's show. Hit subscribe or follow and be sure to share this episode with a friend.